Hello and welcome back to this new edition of News Today. Without delay, let's dive straight into today's headlines. 50th anniversary of India's entry into the nuclear age. Russian president meets Chinese president to further deepen Russia-China ties. RBI concerns over functioning of asset reconstruction companies. Lower tariffs are required to become part of GVC, says Niti Aayog CEO. World economic situation and prospects 2024 mid-year update report released. As per a research, Earth's magnetic field underwent a major weakening 591 million years ago. Starting with the first news. 50th anniversary of India's entry into the nuclear age. This year marks a significant milestone in India's journey as a nuclear power. It has been 50 years since the country conducted its first nuclear test, codenamed Operation Smiling Buddha in 1974. The historic test was carried out at the Pokhran Army Test Range in the desert of Western Rajasthan where a plutonium device with a yield between 10 to 15 kilotons was detonated. This pivotal event propelled India to become the first nation, apart from the five permanent members of the United Nations Security Council, to successfully conduct a nuclear test. While this test put India on the nuclear map, it was not until 1998 that the country flexed its nuclear muscle again. In May of that year, India conducted a series of five nuclear tests, collectively known as Operation Shakti, at the same Pokhran test site. These tests demonstrated India's capability to build nuclear weapons with yields ranging from low to around 200 kilotons, significantly enhancing its deterrent capabilities. So what prompted India's Pokhran 1 test? Firstly, it was driven by the need to establish a credible deterrent against potential adversaries and safeguard its national security interests. Secondly, India objected to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty on the grounds that it unfairly discriminated against countries other than the P5 nations. India's nuclear test did not go unnoticed on the global stage. In 1975, the Nuclear Suppliers Group was established, comprising 48 states that voluntarily agreed to coordinate their export controls to non-nuclear weapon states, governing the transfers of civilian nuclear material, equipment and technology. Today, India's nuclear doctrine is centered around maintaining a credible minimum deterrence posture. It upholds a no-first-use policy, stating that nuclear weapons will only be used in retaliation against a nuclear attack. Notably, India has committed to not using nuclear weapons against non-nuclear weapon states. The country's nuclear retaliatory attacks can only be authorized by the civilian political leadership and India remains committed to the goal of nuclear weapon-free world. As India commemorates five decades since its inaugural nuclear test, it is a moment to reflect on the nation's journey as a responsible nuclear power, balancing deterrence with the pursuit of global peace and disarmament. Moving on to the next news. Russian president meets Chinese president to further deepen Russia-China ties. The two leaders agreed to deepen the comprehensive strategic partnership of coordination for the new era as the year 2024 marks the 75th anniversary of China-Russia diplomatic relations. Let's delve into the China-Russia relationship. Politically, the two nations had previously signed a no-limits strategic partnership even before the Russia-Ukraine war. Strategically, China has emerged as the top supplier of dual-use items to Russia, catering to both civilian and military applications. Economically, China has become Russia's biggest trading partner with bilateral trade exceeding $240 billion in 2023. The factors uniting China and Russia are indeed intriguing. They share similar perceptions of US hegemony, a common fear of NATO expansion and have alternative approaches to exercising international influence and jointly managing shared. Now let's turn our attention to the implications of this relationship on India. The China-Russia alliance has several implications for India. Firstly, it raises security concerns as much of India's defense supplies come from Russia. Any disruptions could have significant implications during India's confrontations with China. Additionally, Russia's dependence on China reduces the likelihood of its pressuring China in border confrontations with India. Furthermore, this alliance could potentially alter regional power dynamics, limiting India's influence in its neighborhood. The recalibration of India's strategic priorities is indeed a point of concern as China-Russia alliance is directed against the USA and West and impinges on India's geopolitical trajectory in Indo-Pacific and Eurasia. Moving on to the global implications of the China-Russia relationship, the alliance has facilitated the resurrection of Western unity under American leadership along with the expansion of NATO. There has been a geopolitical restructuring with increasing Western military support to Southeast Asian countries and India's embrace to US-led security groupings. This development highlights the failure of the multilateral security system in preventing conflicts 
the China-Russia relationship is undoubtedly shaping global geopolitics in significant ways. In our next news, the Reserve Bank of India has highlighted supervisory concerns over the functioning of asset reconstruction companies during a conference with the theme, Governance and ARCs Towards Effective Resolutions. Asset reconstruction companies or ARCs are financial institutions that acquire and manage stressed assets from banks and financial institutions. They were established under the Securitization and Reconstruction of Financial Assets and Enforcement of Security Interest Act of 2002 to aid in the recovery of non-performing assets. Furthermore, let's discuss the significance of ARCs. It helps with the resolution of stressed financial assets. Also, ARC facilitates development of market for distressed assets. It frees the financial system to focus on their core activities and lastly, it creates an alternative investment opportunity for investors. However, several issues with the operations of ARCs are there. One major concern is the backdoor entry of defaulting promoters of insolvent companies. In some cases, ARCs have sold assets to entities with whom the defaulting promoter has struck a deal, allowing them to regain control of the assets. Additionally, the settlement process with borrowers has been lengthy, and the focus of ARCs has primarily been on debt recovery rather than reviving and reconstructing businesses to improve their health. There have also been instances of non-adherence to transparent and non-discriminatory practices. To address these concerns, several measures are required to improve governance in ARCs. These include developing a strong institutional culture that prioritizes integrity and ethical conduct, following transparent and non-discriminatory practices in line with the Fair Practice Code, according due importance to assurance functions like risk management, compliance and internal audit, and adopting a regulation plus approach where compliance with both the letter and spirit of regulations is achieved. The RBI's concern over the functioning of ARCs highlight the need for strengthening governance and ethical practices in these entities to ensure effective resolution of stressed assets. In our next news, lower tariffs are required to become part of global value chain, says Niti Aayog, CEO. Global value chains refer to the process of breaking down production into activities and tasks that are completed in different countries. Integrating into these chains can bring significant benefits for India, such as building globally competitive domestic companies, boosting foreign exchange earnings, fostering faster growth, importing skills and technology, and generating employment opportunities. However, India's integration into global value chains has been weak so far, primarily due to factors like India has not been part of significant trade blocks, for example, SARC is inactive and India has withdrawn from RCEP. Also, country's historical inward-looking industrial policies has raised problems. Apart from that, slow pace of reskilling and upskilling the workforce and lack of integration with lead firms in various industries. For example, Bangladesh outperforms India in the garment industry due to its alignment with GVC lead firms. To address these challenges, the Niti Aayog CEO has highlighted the need for streamlining ports and customs operations, accelerating free trade agreements with key partners, ensuring adherence to international quality standards, targeting high-value specific segments such as defense and electronics, and adopting e-governance and e-compliance in trade. The government has already taken steps to facilitate India's integration into global value chains, including the Production-Linked Incentive Scheme, Consolidation of Labor Laws, Improvement in Logistics Performance, Infrastructure Development Projects like Bharat Mala and Sagar Mala, and Liberalization of Foreign Direct Investment Norms. In conclusion, lowering tariffs and reducing trade barriers is crucial for India to become a part of global value chains and reap the associated economic benefits. In our next news, World Economic Situation and Prospects 2024 Mid-Year Update Report released. The report is prepared by the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Let's begin with discussing the key highlights of the report. The global economy is projected to grow 2.7% in 2024, an upward revision from the earlier forecast of 2.4%. India's expected growth rate for the year 2024 is 6.9% and for 2025 it is 6.6%. This overall growth is attributed to technological breakthroughs, especially in the processing and use of 
critical minerals, which have opened up new opportunities for boosting economic growth. Critical minerals are metallic or non-metallic elements that are considered essential for a country's economic or national security. Every country develops its own list of critical minerals based on industrial needs and supply risks. India has listed 30 critical minerals including antimony, beryllium, bismuth, cobalt, copper, gallium and germanium. However, investments in critical minerals face challenges. The concentration of resources in few geographical locations, such as the lithium triangle of Argentina, Chile and Bolivia, may lead to supply chain vulnerabilities. Supply chain and national security concerns are also increasingly shaping critical mineral sector policies, as seen with the European Union's Critical Raw Minerals Act 2024. Additionally, unsustainable mining and processing practices pose a challenge. Wrapping up, take a look at India's initiatives of critical minerals. India has taken several initiatives, including the formation of Khanij Bidesh India Limited, Kabul, to acquire and process strategic minerals overseas, joining the Mineral Security Partnership led by US, and amending the Mines and Minerals Act to allow the central government to auction areas for critical and strategic minerals. Moving on to the next news. Groundbreaking research on ancient rocks from South Africa and Brazil suggests that Earth's magnetic field underwent a major weakening around 591 million years ago during the Ediacaran period. This period, spanning from 635 million to 541 million years ago, coincided with a significant rise in oxygen levels known as Ediacaran oxygenation. But what's the connection between a weakened magnetic field and the rise of early animals? Let's explore further. It's believed that the weakened magnetic field allowed hydrogen to escape into space, leaving fewer molecules for oxygen to bind with. This in turn translated into more free oxygen in the atmosphere and oceans, creating an environment conducive to the emergence of early animals. To better understand the significance of this discovery, we need to delve into the workings of Earth's magnetic field. Our planet is surrounded by an immense magnetic field forming a region called the magnetosphere. This magnetic field is generated in the Earth's outer core by a process called geodynamo, where the convective energy from slow-moving molten iron is converted into electrical and magnetic energy. The magnetic field forms two poles, the north and south magnetic poles, with opposite polarities similar to a bar magnet. However, the forces that generate this field are constantly changing, causing fluctuations in its strength and even leading to complete pole reversals. But why is Earth's magnetic field so crucial? It plays a vital role in preventing the erosion of our atmosphere by harmful solar wind and protecting Earth from particle radiation emitted during coronal mass ejection events and cosmic rays. Additionally, it guides particles from the sun towards the poles, creating these stunning auroras we witness in the night sky. It's important to note that the forces generating Earth's magnetic field are constantly changing, causing shifts in its strength and even complete reversals of the north and south poles roughly every 300,000 years. During a pole reversal, the magnetic field weakens but does not completely disappear. While these findings shed light on the critical period in Earth's history, they also serve as a reminder of the dynamic nature of our planet and the intricate balance that supports life as we know it. In today's Place in News, we will discuss New Caledonia with its capital, Noumea. Recently, France declared a state of emergency in New Caledonia. Let's talk about its political features. It is a French overseas island territory in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. Its maritime neighbours include Australia, Fiji, New Zealand, Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu. New Caledonia is one of the European Union's overseas countries and territories, but is not a part of the European Union, the Euro or Schengen zones. In terms of its geographical features, it's surrounded by the mountain range called Mount Penier Range, and its highest point is Mount Penier. Its major river is called Diahoth River. Lastly, the lagoons of New Caledonia and associated coral reef ecosystem is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. As we conclude today's main news, let's have a look at some quick updates. Two leaders asked to make certain changes to their speeches made on Doordarshan and All India Radio during the allocated broadcast time. The Election Commission of India allocates time to national and state parties. National parties get telecasting time on Doordarshan's national channel and regional channel as well as on AIR. The World Organization for Animal Health released an annual report on antimicrobial agents intended for use in animals. 
World Organization for Animal Health Headquarter is in Paris and it was founded in 1924 as the Office International des Epizootes and in 2003 adopted the common name WOAH. The Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade organized the ONDC Startup Mahotsav. ONDC is a Section 8 company under the initiative of DPIIT. Moria tribes practice the Deda traditional method of preserving seeds. In the Deda method, seeds are wrapped in leaves packed tightly to look like a boulder and woven with a siali leaves. National Endangered Species Day 2024 has been observed. The theme for the year 2024 is celebrate saving species. It is observed on the third Friday in the month of May. The government is ready to finance up to 50% to create artificial intelligence compute infrastructure in the country. Presently, AI compute infrastructure is being created under the India AI compute capacity component of India AI mission. Researchers have discovered an extinct branch of Nile River, the Arhamat branch, that once flowed alongside pyramids in Egypt. River Nile is the longest river in the world. It flows from south to north through eastern Africa. At the port of Cartagena, Spain, denies port calls to vessels carrying shipment of arms to Israel from India. Port of call is a type of port classified on the basis of specialized functions. Before we wrap up today's bulletin, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this edition of News Today. For the solutions to today's quiz and to access the PDF version of News Today, remember to visit the provided links in the description below.